Supplemental Math Videos from Circle Christian School. Sequence Answer Key. The ultimate play of numbers is sequence and series. Number patterns. The ones where there's a common difference and then the ones where there's a common ratio. We went over in class earlier the arithmetic formulas for finding the rule and the geometric formulas for finding the rules. But these are the formulas for finding the sum of the formulas, or sum formulas, where you take the sequence of numbers and you add them all up together and you get a sum. If the sequence of numbers is arithmetic, then you will put in the number of terms divided by 2, and you're going to multiply that to the first term plus the last term. If it's geometric, then you take the first term and you multiply it to the ratio to the number of terms, minus 1 and r over 1. Infinite, which you're not going to have any of, is just the first term, 1 minus the ratio. All right, the big thing by, behind these are, you know, always when you get to the word problem. With word problems, the important thing is to always find the question. This is where the buck system works out, that you're going to box the question. Next, you're going to isolate inf you know, important information. You can underline it. That's part of the buck system. Find a concept or a formula to use. Circling important math words help you do that. Replace the values and then, of course, you solve. So an example would be finding the first sum, finding the sum of the first 100 positive integers. Well, given the numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, what we're saying is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and it has a common difference of 1. So therefore, it's arithmetic. And because it's arithmetic, we're going to use that first formula. So we need the sum of the number of terms, which is 100. There's 100 terms divided by 2 times the first term, which is 1, and the last term, which is 100. So it ends up with 50 times 101 equals 50-50. And, and what I was thinking of in class is that you have 1 and 100 is 101, and 2 and 99 is 101, 3 and 98 is 101, so you have 50 101s, and that's what gives you the 50-50. Where you would use this is um, a type of word problem. Um, auditorium seats seem to be prime examples of this. There are 20 rows of seats at the Circle Theater, 20 seats on the first row, 21 on the next row, and 21 seats, and so forth. How much should you charge per seat to obtain $15,000 for the sale of all the tickets on the main floor. Well, drawing an example here, you would see that you have 20 seats on the first row, 21 on the next, 22, and there are 20 rows of those and so forth and so on. Since it's arithmetic, we could actually use our little formula here instead of going um, 20 seats, 21 seats, 22, 23, and adding that way, in a much quicker way, we could go, we've got 20 rows divided by 2. 20 plus the last row, which has 39 in them, equals uh, 10 times the 59, which is 590 seats. Now, what I did to find out that there were 39 on the last term here is I used the formula for finding the rule where the difference is 1, and the rule is n plus 19. And so if we put in our last row here, 
um, that is that we have 20 rows. 20 plus 19 is 39, and that's our last row. And then once we have that, we're going to take the amount, $15,000, and divide it by 590 seats. And there we can pretty much come up with the charge for our tickets. These can also be used to find a summation with the notation. And just looking at the rule off to the side there, you can tell whether it's arithmetic or if it's geometric. Geometric generally has some sort of power in it. It's arithmetic if it's something like 7n plus 5, where it looks very linear. So here is one that we're going to try, where we're trying to find the sum of 10 terms, starting with the first term, when our rule is 2 to the power of i minus 1. So using our formula, 1 is the first term, because if you put 1 into the rule here, you get 2 to the power of 0, and any number to the power of 0 is 1. So a sub 1, or our first term, is 1. And now I'm going to multiply it to the ratio, which is 2. And we have 10 terms, so it's to the 10th power, minus 1 over our ratio, which is 2 minus 1. Therefore, equals 1,024 minus 1 over 1 for a total of 1,023. A geometric type of word problem would deal with things like people growing at a certain rate. And in this case, it says 1% per year. Remember, percent is a type of ratio, which lends itself to being geometric. So at 1% a year, that means at the end of the year, the population is 1.01 .01 times, or 1 plus, the population at the beginning of the year. The rule here is that we have 350,000 people, that's our first term, times our ratio 1.01 .01 to the power of n. And that gives us the rule there. Now the population after 10 years, we're going to put a 10 in at the power. Use our handy dandy little calculator. And you get the amount of people of 386. 618. And if you put in a couple of terms, you would see that basically the year that had the least gross was the first growth was the first year. Exponentially, of course, it's going to get more and more. cute little thing that happens with these guys is called a factorial notation, or what we call an exclamation point, or more commonly known in my little world as nvoopy because it's far easier to say than factorial notation 2 or factorial notation 3, or in some cases you'd go 3 factorial notation, which is way too much for anybody to say. So. I call it VUPI for what it's worth. Means that basically we are multiplying a series of factors together. So it just goes to say that zero exclamation point equals one because it has one term. And then one exclamation point also equals one because one stands alone. 2 exclamation point is the factors up to two terms here. So 1 times 2 equals 2. 3 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3. 4 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. 10 factorial is, well, it'd just be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8 times 9 times 10. So using our handy-dandy analyzation skills here, we can see that basically a factorial is just that, the number 
of terms being factored together. Now at the moment I don't think I need the application problems. Um, I think I had those as only examples. What I want you to focus on here at the moment is the examples of the factorials like 6 factorial over 8 factorial is not the same thing as 6 over 8. That it's really the terms being multiplied together. So 6 factorial, which is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6, over 8 factorial, which is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8. Try saying that in one breath. Which, of course, means basically you're just going to cancel out the 6 factorials which would leave you with 7 times 8 or 1 over 56. Again, use your great analyzing skills to deduce, that is, be a detective to figure out what's going on here. Now, adding factorials is not anything like multiplying factorials because you have two types of operations happening here. So adding factorials are going to be a lot of using your order of operations. So we have 2 factorial, which is 1 times 2, added to 4 factorial, which is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, over 6 factorial, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6. We cannot cross over addition or uh, cross cancel. We can't cancel over um, addition and subtraction here. Uh, we have to follow our order of operations before we can do anything. So we have 2 plus four, uh, 24, which gives us 26 over 720. Reduce the fractions, we get 13 over 360. So here's the answer key to the homework that you had. Sequence and series is the ultimate pattern of put something in, you're going to get something out because they are patterns of number, numbers, a sequence of numbers that lead itself to a math rule. And that math rule, you put something in, it gives you something out. What you're putting in here is the order of terms, first term, second term, third term. Put in a one, put in a two, put in a three. So here's the answers to one, two, three, four, and five. I used the uh, arithmetic formula for a sum on number 4 and the geometric formula for number 5. Here's the answers to 6 and 7. Uh, 6 is the arithmetic and 7 is the geometric Number eight and nine are just some practice with factorials. And number 10 is finding a series or a sequence of numbers using a factorial. I have uh, a sub one, a sub two, and a sub three here. I'll let you find a sub four and a sub five. There's actually a pattern. You can kind of figure it out.